Welcome yet again to Outlook 2024. Today it's markets in 2024 with one of Dalal Street's best known, best loved veterans, Manish Chokani, director and I'm holdings, but that's a, 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 a wrong way to introduce a veteran like you, Manish. Okay, you, you make know, me feel so old, but thanks uh, for having me here. <laughs> I call myself also a veteran sure. sometimes. <laughs> Okay, no, actually, yeah. you know, when we talk of Outlook 2024, the first thing that comes to the mind is that 2023 was a damn good year, you know, 20% yeah. high, an eighth consecutive year yeah. of uh, uh, index returns in the positive. Yeah. Can we be ninth time lucky? Well, I hope so. If I were a soothsayer, you know, I'd be somewhere else. But see, the, the macro conditions for India have conspired very, very favorably, as, as is well known. And the market's reflecting that reality. Surely expectations are running high and we are priced for pretty much perfect execution and Goldilocks scenario continuing. That risk always remains, but like it's always said that the big balance sheets of India, whether it's corporate sector, banking sector, government, are all in the right direction. Mm. So no real reason to say that we should have a big setback. Okay. And the, the big indices are not overvalued. No. You may argue something about the mid and the small and the especially the SME exchange. Yes. But but there's nothing yet in the larger caps to suggest that we're anyway approaching a climax in the market. No, that's fair. But they're not cheap either. Sure. I mean, if you look at forward, yeah. Uh, yeah. we may be 19 and a half, yeah, 20. that's right. It's not but a if, cheap market by any, by yes, any standards. Yes, so that's why it right. will be more important for you to help our right. viewers yeah. go f train their eyes. Right. So where would you look for value? See, the first thing is you always, the market corrects due to top-down reasons. It never happens. You, you buy stocks bottom-up based on valuation comfort, but you lose it from something unexpected happening top-down. And by its nature, an unexpected development is something you're not expecting. No. So this market is not priced for unexpected developments. Let's put it that way. So what it means is you may want to keep some gunpowder aside yeah. to if and when there is a correction, you may you know, hopefully have 5-10% money available to dip in at that time. Yes. And if it continues roaring, you're happy anyway, your 80-90% which is invested is anyway going to do well. So it's more a question of let's not get into the fear of missing out mode. Mm -hmm. Be happy with absolute returns, temper your expectations down a bit. Having said that, this is a bull market which will last for long and there will be rotational cycles sector to sector. And in a bull market, it's very bad to be jumping between sectors. Because you miss one, you may not get back on the train. So right. by and large, it's best to stay invested in companies you know well and not worry about someone else has made so much money in the last three months, let me go there and chase that. Uh, and then you end up missing everything. But that I get. We, so, FOMO is yeah, not a good yeah. thing. So just stay with proper asset allocation and with companies that you like. Because this market is clearly pricing in a few years ahead now. It's not about immediate returns. No, but not all over the place. I right. mean, there are there are still banking stocks. For instance, HDFC Bank. Right. It's not a uh, participate sure. in the sure. rally. Nor has Kotak. Right. PSU banks. Sure. Do you think there is value? Yeah. In I mean, the... look, it's a consensus now amongst I think everyone you'll speak to in the market that the large caps is where the value is, as opposed to the mid and the smaller ones. And one shouldn't generalize, but generally saying that okay. it's it's correct to say that the larger caps is where really the action now should be. Secondly, the banking sector has it was leading the market. Then it's taken its pause and then hopefully the next leg starts. In this leg, the PSU banks are kind of rallying a bit more because until now, all they've done is track earnings growth. The multiples have not really expanded. Uh, and like I've said on some other shows that you literally have a menu. You can buy a Canara bank on a forward multiple of five. You could buy a PNB or a BOB on a six, SBI on seven and stuff like that. Yes. Till you get to even the great HDFC bank will probably be in a year from now more than $10 billion of profit. And it's probably a 17 multiple for a you know franchise of that quality. Uh, it could easily be, the Kotak multiple is 24, for example. So there's so, a big gap right over there. So banking surely should be the leader of this market. But if you think of how this market's been running very similar to the 2004 bull market, you've gone into all the infrastructure names yes. because the cyclicals are back from LNT to the defense and the railway names. In fact, Hindustan Aeronautics is now in Quartile 2 of India, oh. uh, which, which, which one couldn't think of many, many years ago. PSU banks, of course, are you know, very much there to catch up. But a lot of these public sector stocks are trading on 30, 35 times forward one year on FI25, which one wouldn't have imagined. So similar to the 2004 bull market, infrastructure, power, real estate, banking, and some commodities 
I have been participating yes. against the erstwhile favorites of FMCG and IT, IT and others. So that's really the typical cycle in a, in, a, in a bull market. Okay, but would you be wary of the power, for instance? You know, I was just looking at the power stocks, risen between 50 and 400% sure. sure. in 2023. So those would be the red flags? So look, it's a valuation call end of the day that, you know, if you want to buy risk-free, the risk-free rate in a bank gives you, let's say, 8%, which means you're giving an implied 12 and a half 12 and PE half. multiple. Our market is on 20 times, which means it's not risk-free. You're priced in, you know, a couple of years ahead yes. of earnings. You know there is a shortage of power because post the 2008 crisis, nobody invested in putting up power. So there is a golden period for the power sector. We as a country are short on energy. So whether it's the oil stocks, whether it's the, you know, coal and uh, thermal, thermal stocks, stocks, or it's the renewable. solar. And I'm very hopeful that we start developing nuclear and other renewables very, very quickly that there is a you know, whole gamut of opportunity there and a lot of the private sector players are of scale and size now. So, no, but I worry about the price. Pricing, look, for, I've said it at the beginning that most of the stocks are now pricing the vision of the investor rather than the entrepreneur. Okay. Like, you know, uh, uh, Mark Faber used to very famously say at the beginning of the cycle, the entrepreneur has the vision and the investor has the money. Right. And by the end of the cycle, the entrepreneur has the money and the investors yes. have the vision. Yeah. So we are in that phase where when people are buying stocks on 60, 70, 80, 100 multiples, it's clearly going to be maybe a decade for them to get to that 12 and a half P from which they start making the return of equity of the underlying business. Okay. And you've seen this historically, yes. right? Yes. In the 90s, we, we said you have to buy Hindustan lever on every Diwali and then it didn't perform for 10 years. Yes. Then when the tech boom came, it know, went Info to double digit Infosys, one day. Infosys Remember? peaked and then it didn't the stock didn't perform for 10 years, even though the business did well. Uh, the great reliance, DLF, Bharti, they didn't perform for 10 years. So, so let me come to so this So it's question. possible yeah. that... When do you exit? What <laughs> advice do you have? So the cyclicals typically, when you know there's an end of a cycle coming and this valuation euphoria is going to an extreme, you will tend to see signs of market tops where there will be IPOs or projects which are not for near term, but also visionary. Or there are crazy acquisitions being made or there is a big retail type euphoria or an IPO which comes, which is very large and it fails. Having said the fact that we are not a cheap market, we are not so crazy as yet. It's, yes. They, they are those, what I call mini bubbles in segments of the market, but it's not yet large enough to take the entire top of the market down. Okay. Uh, save us that those blushes. <laughs> but I want to ask right. you a little more about the red flags that we should sure. be wary of. Those questions after a break. Stock Markets Outlook 2024, that's what we've been discussing with market veteran Manish Chokhani. Before we went to the break, uh, Manish, mm -hmm. uh, you gave us an idea of stocks that still have value sure. and where, you know, uh, value has been replaced by vision. But for the market as a whole, what may be the red flags? See, markets always will fall or correct on external factors. It's never that a company individually can disappoint and take the whole market, market down or one sector can take the whole market down. And the risks are actually fairly well known to you know most observers of the market that the mothership of all equity markets globally is USA. Mm. The US market has been very, very narrow for a long period of time where the so-called Magnificent Seven are ruling the roost. Mm. And you can see chinks in the armor of the at least five of those seven. Where Which you, are not AI stocks. You, you know like Apple has already you yeah. know, been declining in quarter on quarter in terms of sales. So it's still growing but it's not... It's not mm something which should be holding a $3 trillion type market cap, yeah. which is close to our entire market cap. Uh, you know the issues which are facing Alphabet, which is yes. at the risk of disruption from AI, plus the regulatory pressures on them. You know the issues which are arising in Tesla, and especially now with the way the Chinese have come up yeah. with BYD and others. So in, I won't elaborate all mm. of them, but other than say Nvidia or Microsoft, the others could be at some risk of disappointing the market. And when typically something like that breaks, it causes a steep correction because the risk of trade comes in and that risk of then naturally comes and affects us far away. Uh, you also know the way the G7 have been running such loose, irresponsible fiscal policy. Uh, the UK to me seems to be the canary in the coal mine that they've broken away from EU 
They have a terrible trade deficit. They have a terrible fiscal deficit. If anyone were to uh, rate them the way they rate India, it would not be investment yeah, it grade. It won't be investment grade. But that currency has not moved. Like the Japanese yen has gone down 50% in a year. Yes. But the pound sterling wow. hasn't gone. And uh, the US, every time they raise the debt ceiling, they're at $35 trillion of debt. And that can't hold the reserve currency status forever, uh, pulling wool over everybody's eyes and just printing their way out of trouble every time. So already you see the signs from the Chinese and the Russians and the Saudis saying we don't wish to participate over here. It might take a bit longer to break, but you need one bond market failure or one blow up of a bank, which, you know, with four or 5% interest rate hikes, someone has taken big losses somewhere in the system. And it can't be one Silicon Valley bank which has blown up. It can't be that the Fed is holding all the losses over yeah. there and there are no consequences. So something like that breaks. How something it breaks, external. How it breaks, I don't know. Mm -hmm. We all know the issue of what happens in East Asia if China decides to flex its muscles. Now that the US is out of its arsenal supporting Ukraine as well as Israel. It, these are unknowns. Yeah. But if they come, they can you know, yes, put, yes, put a certainly. light under our sanguine Goldilocks scenario to our markets. Even domestically, while That's everything looks pure blue skies, we know there is the, you know, post this election, and we are all assuming there'll be continuity of policy and direction and government and so on. But, you know, when these new seats have to be recast between North and South, there's the Uniform Civil Code, there is uh, the CAA, there was agricultural so there reform. Social so we, we saw things which happened which put sentiment back. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change the underlying fundamentals of the country, but Currently, see, we are pricing ourselves for clear blue skies. Everything will work as we want every month for the next few years, yes. not just a few months. So that warrants some caution. But again, like I say, a bull market mm. exceeds your expectations on the upside, the way a bear market exceeds on the downside. So I still personally believe that in this decade, India is a big economy in a sweet spot of the type which may cause a gigantic bubble to emerge here, like we saw in Japan in the late 80s. We saw in China, uh, and therefore it's not only about economic performance, it's about how the market prices that economic That's performance, true. which determines your long-term returns. Yeah. So I'm hopeful we don't cause a bubble and we do get these minor shocks from time to time, so we kind of go up gradually climbing a step rather than taking an elevator up and then the elevator down. Absolutely. Actually, you were uh, explaining to me the uh, China-India performance from 2008 yeah. to now. I mean, China has been the best economy of this world for the last 20 years. And if you are a stock market investor, your returns are zero. Uh, because from you, 2008 to today. Yeah, even 2000 to 2023, because the last two, three years have been so terrible, they wiped everything out. And they had two big spikes in the interim. I don't know if you can pull up charts. Yeah, and put them we are up. showing the charts. But, uh, you know, if, post the 2008 crisis, they spiked. Uh, in the mid uh, uh, 2010s, also they spiked. Uh, and that's the creation of the Alibabas and the Tencents and all of the world, while the rest of the market suffered. And China is cheap. China is less China than, is cheap, it's half, half, less than half of uh, GDP is the market cap of China. We are probably so you at one point two five. So see that as a competition, uh, taking away money. So it's a very consensus trade in the world to avoid China at all costs and be overweight India. Yeah. Uh, there are no investment committees in the world who would sign off on putting fresh money to China, and the market doesn't just turn when it's cheap. The way I'm saying, our market won't just turn because it's expensive. You need some catalyst. Catalyst. And in China, until the locals start getting confidence to come back in their market, because they are so nervous with the money they've lost in property as well as in stocks and with the regulatory changes which come unexpected. Oh, yes. the so the text. mood is very, very, very negative. So value buyers are fishing there and stocks are really cheap. I mean, I can't begin to tell you how cheap stocks are in China. Okay, so that's something. But if you watch. look out three years from now, will the Chinese market be double? It's probably a good bet to take. I, I can't say that for India, much as I'm patriotic and I'm fully invested here. Yes. But uh, we've paid a, a lot of price uh, Yeah, but then for, there is a political uh, uh, risk yeah, also yeah, in yeah, China, absolutely. which perhaps, uh, yeah, you know, foreign yeah, investors yeah, are worried about. Yeah. No, let me come back to yeah. India and to stocks. Sure. You know, the Zomatos, the Nikas, right. uh, I mean, w what's your view? Are the digital e-commerce, the tomorrow stocks, sure. uh, were the uh, No, they are, the look, they are great businesses. They are run by very, very competent people, and they've delivered and executed very well. They've virtually become monopolies, oligopolies, or call them what you will. The pricing, I'm, as a value guy, I find it hard to digest that I'm paying pretty much for 10 years of perfect execution, no competition, rising margin profile. It's a hard bet to take. But can they deliver it? Can they execute it? 
Yeah, I mean, sure. But I'm going to make money after I, 10 I, years. Well, I don't have so much money that I have to worry about what I've missed. And one thing I've learned in the market, you don't ever have FOMO. Mm. If someone's making it somewhere and they understand, they're justified the returns they make. If I understand something else and I can play over there and make my adequate returns, we should be happy with that. And that's all I would say for most investors. We can't have a circle of competence which covers every stock in India. Uh, Absolutely. You know, go where you understand. Valuations to me, all I've learned in life is my ability to predict is very, very bad. Okay. So my only defense really is humble. buying cheap. No, it's, it's a, no one knows it. Right? Yes. You could be president of United States and you don't know what's going to happen. So no one can predict the future. Your only defense, as all the gurus, Buffett onwards have said, you buy at a price yeah. which is so good that you then don't worry about all these external risks and you know, yeah. a funny person coming and running the company and so on. The, the price what you pay is really what determines your returns. You discuss the uh, PSU banks sure. or even banks, even right. private yeah. banks yeah. in yeah. that vein right. that it's, they are not uh, yeah. overpriced. They are not, they're they're not, not at all. I think you, they're all. still very, very solid returns. Anything else? On scale. Anything else? On sc so it's a rotational bull market. So from time to time, you know, things fall off the radar. Like pharma. Came. Like pharma, for example, last month was a dog sector and it's been performing very well. So like it will happen in this bull market that certain times it's, you know, the defense and railway stocks are leading. EMS, for example, was something we yeah, spoke about Yeah, what about, about EMS, actually, year. since the so, government has put its, uh, see, it's a, might behind it's, it. It's a complete white space sector today. And I have often given the analogy of it being the, like the Maruti moment when Suzuki came into India and it changed the whole automobile sector. Same thing when G came to India, they changed the whole IT services sector. Yes. The whole ecosystem is going to get cast with the coming of Apple in India. Apple's on a $10 billion run rate from India. Their ambition is to be $100 billion. The entire ecosystem is being made. We are still at the very bottom end of the value addition chain. And I know very famous people talk very dismissively about that. We are screwdriver guys. You start like that. You don't reach the top of the semiconductor chain straight away. Design and mm. the machinery making yes. is very, very far away. And these are consolidated global businesses. But assembly, packing, electronic, if you don't make it, you'll have a big import bill. So yes. it has to be done in any case. The industry is still very, very small. Valuations are fantastic. There are 60 multiples, 50 multiples on FI25. So you must be a real believer because these are low margin businesses yes. as well. Yeah. So their ability to deploy capital, produce those returns in a modular fashion rather than you know whole hog, it's not easy. Okay. And there, there is no easy return in this market, let's be honest about yeah. that. Great industry, yeah. great business, but, yeah, but are price. you buying at the yeah, right There's price. a price for everything. Yeah. Okay, now we have a budget coming in. I mean, it's sure. a vote on account and yeah. then it'll be a full budget. Yeah. What are you, What's your wish list? See, budgets, fortunately, they've made it a lot of a non-event, which is the way it should be. But when a new government comes in and a third term and presumably it's a very strong government, there are a lot of big policy things which I guess are waiting in the arsenal and one would love to see that happening. For example, from a financial sector perspective, we've missed privatization for many, many years. Yes. The market's giving fantastic valuations. It wants something to give the supply to cool off. Uh, so that would be one yes. immediate thing. Again, from a stock market. And it will benefit the government. It benefits everyone. And it creates fiscal space for you to continue your CAPEX expenditure, yes. which, which has been one of the basis of this entire bull market. What Absolutely. we've done on infrastructure, railways, ports, airports. Absolutely fantastic yes. and stunning and more power to them. Uh, there's been asked uh, by no, no less a person than Uday Kotak to please stop taxing our dividends twice. That's all we live yes. by. Don't tinker a lot with capital gains tax and change the mood of people. That's on a very sort of selfish financial yeah, perspective. Yeah, for all of us. But as a nation, I think we've, we've not fixed our energy bill for years. So not having enough of drilling happening, even the nuclear deal which was signed in you know, Manmohan Singh's yes. tenure, it's 15 years later, has harvested. still not kick-started. China is building nuclear reactors, small ones, by the dozen. And we will need a lot more energy and uh, fuel uh, to not hold back this economy from growing. We already have a power shortage yes. as, as we speak. So that has to be fixed. A lot of our FTAs, which have been pending for very long, like Bangladesh exports a lot more textile than India, and we are the natural beneficiaries of that. A lot of those are pending to be signed. If they can get accelerated and signed, it becomes dramatic. For local manufacturing, which we are also bullish about, you need this labor reform to happen. You need a lot of this agricultural reform to happen so that industry can take yes. space. So there are lots of things which are out there, apart from what Sanjeev Sanyal talks of the you know boring 
process reforms, yes, judicial the legal reforms, reforms because uh, what Manish Sabarwal calls the regulatory cholesterol has to be removed <laughs> from our system. So there's a lot of work always to be done in a country like yes, ours. I, and one hopes but we live as optimists because things are in the right direction and they can only get better. Okay. Now, Manish, I'm being warned we are out of sure. time. So now the most important question yes. for me. I believe your big uh, hobby now or maybe your mainstay now Ho is music. I mean, you're yeah, not I so much it, in yeah. stocks as much right. as in music. So you have to sing me a song. My gosh. <laughs> no, I mean, you've then given, you you, there the is spot. a YouTube uh, playlist. <laughs> no, that's just for my friends and family, which... <laughs> no, I heard one of them. Sure. So now please sing for us. Uh, well, given it's the new year, I'll sing you a uh, few lines from a very favorite poet of mine is Gulzar. Okay. And I sing his old song, Dil Dhunta Hai, Fursat Ke Raad Din, or I sing Tum Pukar Lo. Okay. But for the new year, the appropriate song would be Aane Wala Pal. Oh, okay. Jaane okay. Wala Hai, Ho Sake To Isme Zindagi Bita Lo, Pal Jo Ye Aane Wala Hai. Golmal. From Golmal, that's yes. right. Mm -hmm. Please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, hey. Ha 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 I think I should pause Excellent. that. Or you'll get everyone switching off. <laughs> no, no, no. That was a brilliant way uh, to conclude the conversation and a message. Thank you. That let's enjoy the sure. good times we have had yeah. and may they last in 2024 Great. as well. Thank you very Thanks much, Manish. I'm very sure this is going to be one of our best shows. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you so much.